was on a quest one spring day a few years ago, looking for Daffodil Hill at the Arboretum. I was told it was spectacular, and I had a vision in my head of a hill gloriously carpeted in bright yellow blooms. So my husband Angelo and I started driving the road winding through the Arboretum with my eyes looking up, scanning for this breathtaking hill. Along the way, Angelo pointed out to me that there were daffodils blooming on the ground all around us. But I gave them just a passing glance because I was looking for this hill. I left the Arboretum very disappointed because I never found that hill. It was later I discovered that what I was looking for was Daffodil Glade and all those beautiful flowers on the ground all around us that I barely looked at was the spectacular show of blooms I was searching for. I have approached my quest for finding God much in the same way for most of my life looking up and beyond for glory, glory, hallelujah, instead of opening my eyes to see what was happening in the ordinary life right around me. This shift in seeing came undramatically, but nonetheless jolting, during the hardest week of my life. My beloved, full-of-life, 17-year-old daughter, Celeste, was involved in an accident that put her in an induced coma at the hospital. Many family and friends came to be with us as we kept vigil, and they didn't come empty-handed. They brought us food, vitamins, and drinks to sustain us. They brought flowers, hugs, and prayers to comfort and console us. Celeste's friends gathered and made posters to hang in her room to show their love and cheer her on. During one of my many visits to the hospital chapel, I was praying so hard, asking God up there over and over again, hold us in your hands, hold us in your hands. And I think maybe out of pure exasperation, God unclouded my eyes to see that he was indeed right there with us, holding us in his hands, literally, through the hands-on care and loving support enfolding us through all those people, including the hospital staff, from the housekeepers to the nurses. Celeste did not survive her injuries and thus began an intense daily dialogue with God that, I must admit, was often a one-sided tirade. But eventually, through much grieving, my soul became still enough to hear God's urgings, a growing desire within me to seek wisdom. Instinctively, I sought out the wisdom of elders, and I trained to be a pastoral care minister, bringing communion to the residents on the second floor of St. Pat's. I met some unforgettable people there, but I didn't find the wisdom I was searching for. Most people I talked to were in pain and feeling desolate because of the losses they were enduring, loss of family and friends, loss of health and independence, loss of dignity. I felt dismayed and wondered, what was I missing here? I didn't grasp it back then, but I see now that I was once again looking up and beyond for a great glory, glory, hallelujah wisdom, a deep and profoundly comforting answer to the meaning of life. In retrospect, though, I realized that I did miss something that was right there in front of me. I was bringing Jesus to these people who were at the end of their life twice, once through the sacrament of Holy Communion, and then again through the sacrament of Holy Sitting With, talking, 
listening, cracking jokes with, consoling, massaging hands, giving hugs, just being with. That was the wisdom God was trying to open up for me. Jesus is within me. After serving as a pastoral care minister at St. Pat's, I decided that I really liked working with elders and went back to school to earn a bachelor's degree in social work, which I thought would open job opportunities for me. But I found that to actually work with people, I needed a master's, which I didn't want to do because I had a daughter just about to start college. I took a job as a caregiver at a local assisted living residence and saw how people with dementia were often pushed to the side because they did not fit into the mainstream. That led me to my present job as an activities coordinator at a memory care residence. I absolutely love developing relationships with the residents there and finding ways to engage them that bring fulfillment and joy to their lives. They bring fulfillment and joy to my life as well. My mom also has Alzheimer's disease. The insights gained from working with my residents have helped me to accept my mom as she is and to not see her as diminished in any way. God is between us is a quote from a favorite movie. And God is present in abundance in this little community. I think salvation means finding a way to live a life of compassion, service, and joy. Jesus works within us to help us find this way. Jesus is my Savior. I thought I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Now I know I do. Glory, glory, hallelujah.